access to free parts on Sports 360 Extra, the NBA All-Star Weekend in New Orleans, where I'll take you through the sights and sounds of the New Orleans culture, business, and a taste of Africa. Join me as I speak to a street musician about the history of the city, and I meet up with the Nigerian Olympian, Ike Diogu. But my first stop of the day is all about the fan experience. It's the NBA Jam Session. weekend and this is the jam session in the NSN Morial Convention Center in the heart of New Orleans. Now the jam session is an opportunity for sponsors like Sprite, Spalding and Chevron to share some entertaining facts with the kids and everybody in New Orleans. Now if you look around me there's so many events taking place here it's just a mind-blowing factor. The NBA definitely turns out big so you can enjoy the jam session here in New Orleans. It's the NBA weekend. The NBA All-Star Jam Session is designed by the NBA and its sponsorship partners as a wall-to-wall -wall basketball fund for all the Orange Ball fans out there. It features non-stop basketball actions where fans can shoot slam, dribble, and drive in what the organizers call the world's largest interactive basketball theme park. As well as offering physical exercise and some healthy competition, the fans can also meet past and present NBA stars, and they can even have a go at a real NBA champion's ring. For me, it was all about measuring myself against a paper replica of the giant Shaq O'Neal. With everything related to the NBA, this NBA All-Star Jam Session can be summarized in numbers. Jam Session boasts over 500,000 square feet and more than 40 attractions. More than 80,000 fans will attend the Jam Session over the course of the four days. And an attraction that caught my eyes was the Dream Big Station. There, the NBA displayed exhibits from the National Civil Rights Museum featuring the inspiring history of African-American basketball players as well as showcasing some local talent in the neighborhood. <laughs> Now this campaign was set up by the NBA to celebrate the legacy of African Americans. Dream Big kicks off on Martin Luther King Jr. Day and runs through Black History Month in February as Saskia Sorosa, the NBA Vice President of Multicultural and Targeted Marketing said. The Dream Big campaign honours African Americans for their countless contributions that have opened doors for people around the world. With the NBA's young and diverse fan base, we felt it was important to create a programme that would engage kids by educating them about black history to positively impact the future. Next stop was the New Orleans culture scene. After leaving the NBA Jam session, I walked down the famous Bourbon Street and all its places of revelry to find myself on the most famous place in New Orleans, Jackson Square. Here, after I admired the art and listened to the music, I went on to meet a street musician for him to tell me more about the Big Easy. Now, I'm from the UK via Africa, so what type of music did you perform there? <laughs> Gumbo. Look, it's Americana. It's folk, blues, jazz, rock and roll, country, gumbo. A lot of music came out of New Orleans. Rock and roll, jazz, blues. Um, most of the good rhythm sections from the 1950s on came out of New Orleans. A lot of what happened here, a lot of the early rock and roll stuff was recorded right here. It was the birthplace of a lot of different music. It's the birthplace of a lot of culture that happens for this country. How important is music to the story of New Orleans? 
It depends on who you ask. To some people it's oil, to some people it's cotton, to some people it's slavery, okay? But to all the people that are important to me, the music and the food are what we're about. It took time to have culture. That, that time was given by generations of people working very hard so that their children had a home to live in and time to do other than just go to a job. You know how, you know how culture happens. It takes time. There's no time, there's no culture. You know, some people call us lazy because we invest ourselves in what we invest ourselves in. That is learning how to take cheap food and make it wonderful. How to take simple music and make it beautiful. It's what New Orleans does. Take me home. And New Orleans, you talked about uh, being, what's the call, uh, people say that you're lazy. They can never say that to New Orleans, knowing fully well that a few years ago Katrina happened and New Orleans has built itself back to where it is. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> we did it in spite of. You've got to understand that, that after that storm, our government was against us. Uh, big sections of this country wanted us to just go away. But at the same time, these beautiful, wonderful people would come down here and help us guard our houses. They were no part of no government and no political organization. They were just people believed that what had happened here was wrong and that we were hurt and they would come help. By the thousands and thousands, they came and helped. And we picked ourselves up. And yeah, my town is back. I got no use for the thing, I ain't for the time. I could have stayed the whole day chatting to this fantastic gentleman about New Orleans, the music and the Afro descendants in the USA, but I had an appointment with a Nigerian Olympian and former NBA player, Idilgu. This will prove to be a very informative chat as I came to learn about the influence that Africa has had on the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. It's the All-Star Weekend. It's been absolutely crazy so far. Even though the games itself hasn't begun, what, what are your experiences so far over the last 24 hours? Uh, it's been crazy. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, I've seen a lot of friends, uh, doing a lot of networking. So mm. it's been uh, it's, it's been pretty cool. Let's talk about you know the NBA and you being an African uh, coming from Nigeria, playing in a league that's most prestigious here in the United States of America. Tell me a little bit about that transition. Uh, basically, uh, you know it's. Uh, it's pretty much a dream come true. You know, so many uh, athletes at a young age who aspire to play in the NBA. And uh, if you think about it, you know, there's only two rounds of the NBA draft, which means there's only 60 players uh, that get the privilege of being drafted. Mm. And uh, I was drafted in 2005. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be a first round pick. And, um, you know, it was really just by the grace of God, mm. really. Mm. It's been a uh, Experience. In terms of the African, you know, the African experience and the ha African input of the NBA, we've had legends like uh, Dikemi Matumbo, Hakim Olajuwon. You know, how were those names in, in, in inspiring someone like you to play, you know, play in the biggest league in the world? Well, you know, you alluded to it. You know, I think uh, we're a select group of uh, Africans, and I think uh, no matter where we're from, what uh, what country, uh, what, what country we're from in Africa, I think we all all Africans always pull for each other. Mm. We like to see each other succeed. Mm. So uh, when you see somebody like Hakeem or the Kembe, uh, you know, it just pushes you that much more to uh, try to be the next African in line to open up the doors mm. for everybody else. Is that feeling like? For, for, for example, somebody like you, um, do you feel like that? Like when you're coming into a league like the NBA, knowing that you've had African legends that have kind of like proved, you know, they've opened the door for you. So do you feel like you are doing something that would perhaps open the door for other Africans to come through? Yeah, I feel, I feel like I am because I feel like uh, Africa in general, you know, and 
not even just specifically you know, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I think Africa is a really uh, untapped uh, region uh, for talent. You know, there's a lot of uh, really, really good players in Africa. So any chance that I get to bring the awareness to the country um, or to the continent, I should say, uh, you know, what more can you ask for? Africa is predominantly a football, soccer crazy continent. But, you know, the NBA has bought it in, within the business to, to see Africa as the next target by opening an NBA Africa office and trying to promote heavily in, in Nigeria, South Africa. We're having an NBA party tonight. Um, what do you think needs to be done, especially in Africa with 800 million people to promote, to get more athletes like yourself focused on the sport and perhaps play here one day? Uh, just, uh, you know, coaching. I think is the main thing because uh, just our genetic makeup, uh, Africans, you know, we're all big, strong, athletic, able to run and jump. And I just think redefining our skill set is just really the next thing. Because uh, this summer when I played in the Afro basket, you know, I was really blown away with some of the uh, players on some of these teams. I mean, there's some really good, good players in Africa that not a lot of people know about, and with a little bit of coaching they have more than enough potential to play in the NBA mm. and to be good players in the NBA. So I think that's the next phase uh, for the development of African basketball. Mm. So they need to invest in a little bit more coaching and a little bit more resources to get those basketball players out, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, you got to do the same thing that you do for soccer. You know, in, in Africa, you know, we don't, we don't cut any corners, we don't play any games when it comes to soccer. And you know, that's what we hang our hat on as a continent. And I think if we did the same thing for basketball, we would start to see, uh, you know, a lot more teams do better in the Olympics. Um, you know, not just Angola, because, uh, you know, Angola is a prime example of, uh, you know, a program that's ran the right way. And, uh, you know, that's why they're 13 or 12-time African champions. Mm. And, you know, I just think if everybody took that same mindset, uh, people would be really surprised with the... Uh, results that an African team could accomplish. You mentioned the fact that you have family still in Nigeria. What parts of Nigeria and what does it mean to you to, to represent those folk? Uh, I have family members in uh, Were and uh, Amazon. Mm. So, uh, you know, family all throughout Emo State. That's where we're from. Uh, got a tremendous amount of pride for all those guys. Uh, so when I put on the green, white green, you know, I play for them. I play for my last name. Mm. Uh, I play for all my cousins in Nigeria. So, uh, very, very, very uh, blessed to be able to represent those guys. And, you know, even though I'm in the U.S., I always want them to know that I'm thinking about them all the time. Listen, Ike, uh, we wish you good luck in 2014. Exactly. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Appreciate Thanks for the time. Man. You heard it. The NBA features the most gifted basketball players on the planet. And within that group, African players are flying the flag high for their continent. So it is with no surprise that the NBA is hosting a party here in New Orleans to celebrate its African players. You'll see all about it on the next episode next Thursday at 8 p.m. on Sports 360 Extra. Until then, it's bye for now.